If I drop it off after work, can I wait for you to quilt it? Or should I come back this evening after bowling? I finished it today in a class of 27. They'll be here next week with Sam and Ole. The tech. Welcome to the Fred segment of In the Loop with Laura. Today I am very pleased to have on my friend Debbie Swango, quilter extraordinaire. Twelve years ago my family moved to town and I had a little teeny baby girl and I had just made her a little baby quilt and I heard that the thread shed was open. I went down there and one of the first people I met was Debbie and I've never met a quilter quite like her. So I'm very pleased to have her on. <laughs> Debbie, did you come out of the womb quilting? Sewing. I started <laughs> sewing when I was about six. You were six? Yeah, probably. Making Barbie clothes. And you still have never stopped with Barbie clothes? No, still make them. Okay. And then you went on and made your own clothes, right? Mm hmm. Made my wedding dress. When you were 18 or 19? Yes, 18. And um, then when her daughter was older, she became a Girl Scout troop leader and did many things. What were some of them? Uh, we conducted a murder trial. Did you go to the courthouse for that? Yes. Okay, awesome. The trial was at the roller skating rink. I mean, the murder was at the roller skating rink. Appropriate for a Girl Scout yes. troop. Yes. The newscast was at the, the courthouse. So Debbie is very creative. I think that we can all <laughs> hear this. <laughs> when did you start quilting? In 1999, when my daughter gave up Girl Scouts. Okay. So you had to do something with this extra... I had free time. <laughs> ...creative energy. So you had planned. Had you planned? Yes. When it's done, this is what I'm going to do. Yes. Why? I made my first quilt in 1977. Oh, really? Yes. That's a, there was a big revitalization of quilting right around the bicentennial. People hearkening back to what happened probably 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. was, and I know that that's when some quilting fabric first began to be produced because in the 70s a lot of it was polyester based. And with quilting you're constantly ironing these pieces. It doesn't work well with polyester. So that was really the rebirth of quilting in the States. That, the first quilt I made was scraps of fabric that I had used in my own clothing Aww. up to my wedding gown. So lots of different things. Yes. And was this something that you hand tied then to hold the yes. pieces together? And did you use it as your comforter on your bed or was it just It was of more a of a lap? lap quilt. It got used till it fell apart. I was going to ask you if you still had it. No, I filed 13 it. Okay, now this can be controversial, but from all the quilters that I know, they want their quilts to fall apart. When they make them and they give them, they don't really, some people will take them and they'll fold them up nice and put them in a chest and say, look, I've never used it. And some, I don't know, it's going to last for a while, but the quilters I know are like, it makes me happier when the binding's falling off and you have to bring it back to me and say, yeah, do something with it. So you knew from 1977 that you were going to use. Yes, yeah, someday I would be making more. So what, your daughter, you retired from Girl Scout Troop. Did mm -hmm. you have a nice vest with all the... Badges? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. <laughs> well, what do you remember one of the first things that you did? It was a burgundy and cream that also got file 13. Okay, but file 13 because you used it so much or because you hated it and you burned it? I hated it and burned it. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I had another quilter on who burned her first few quilts. Yeah. So what were some of those early mistakes that you made? Was it the colors or was it... The putting together, was it the quilting? What was it? I'm basically self-taught, mm -hmm. so I made a lot of mistakes. And... You were frustrated with your final, yes. final product. So we pitched it and started simpler. I think my first project was a little bit more okay. than what I needed to tackle. Okay. How did, did you start with machine piecing? Like, where did yes. you start from? Machine piecing. I want you to know this because you have to see where she's gotten to. Exciting. Yes. All right, let's look at... <laughs> this is not machine pieced. No, this is applique. And more than that, Debbie has gone from machine piecing to applique, which is a hand piecing. Let's hold it up and then we'll go. And then she's gone to designing her own quilts. I know it's helped in part from her husband also being a drawer. And I don't think, have you ever been scared that you're not going to be able to achieve what you what you're trying not to capture. Not really. Not really. Let's move it up a little bit. So in this, there's one large center block, and then we've got 
I guess, yeah, they are separate blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ten blocks around. And each of them is a separate flower and birds. And I remember, did Dave draw that? No, those you are did? actually mine. Okay, let's take a closer look at the rabbits. and We can move it to whatever. <laughs> So was, did you create all of this or did you get, you got the majority from a book, didn't you? Different things. Okay. The center medallion is a William Morris piece, a William Morris design. So the rest of the designs were either from William Morris or William Morris fabrics that I did an adaptation on. The, when you get on the internet and you look at his designs, he had a lot of rabbits. That's what I was going to ask. For people who don't know, who is William Morris? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he designed wallpaper and stuff like that. Okay. And it, fabric line has it, come after in his In the designs. stylization, these fabrics are reproductions. So this is the, the feel of... Yes, this is a William Morris fabric, too. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of flowers... Okay, so this is a center medallion. This was what on a... He had had this, I think, on a wallpaper design. Okay. This is, what is this called, this motif? Is it a pomegranate? No, not pomegranate. It's not a pomegranate? No. Pomegranate's in three sections. Okay. I made one today. <laughs> Says the expert. And here we've got two birds. And, I mean, just even this. To applique that, what does that take? Because there's so many corners to it. Patience. Okay. Debbie works with small children. Debbie has patience. Th this is cheaper than Prozac. <laughs> I think there's a whole amen that's just gone out from the people who are watching. And I have to point this out, and my husband asked specifically, would this be on the show? What is this? That's a design that I started, and those of us who are quilting together, we call it the swango. The swango. Okay, so you might wonder if it's a dance move. It kind of isn't quilting. It's just a little, it's a, the same piece folded over. Is it a quarter inch out and a quarter inch under? Yes. So um, a piece of fabric cut to an inch, ironed in half, and then laid on the seam and put in. And that, again, a lot of quilting is three-dimensional, very, you know, uh, slight. And so that's another dimension. Um, a frame, a border, but it's a three-dimensional one. And this is all hand quilted. Can you tell us when you started hand quilting? Probably in about 2000, right after I started. Why? It was the thing to do. You made the top, you hand quilted it. It was the thing to do? Yeah. Keep away from bridge jumping, woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had a common friend who hand quilted at that time. Yes, Helen Marsh. And was it from her encouragement that you started hand quilting or hand piecing? Um, the applique was her encouragement. I had um, hand quilted before I met her. Did, is it difficult to hand quilt? No, no. The main thing is don't beat yourself up about someone saying your stitches are too small or too large. Mm. It's whatever you can accomplish the main thing is consistency that's in the true. size of your sit, your yeah, the size of your stitch. Yeah, that's important. And I should, I would think if you look at one section and another section and it's similar, that's a wonderful thing. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next quilt. This is beautiful. Do you have this hanging in your house? Yes. So it started with Debbie, she did machine piecing, and then she went to, did you do, go to applique then, and then you went to hand piecing, and then you were... I really don't like hand piecing. Okay. It's more something that Frankie, your sister-in-law, enjoys. Right. But in some ways, applique is kind of hand piecing, and we have some beautiful... And then she went to 
starting a little bit. She'd take a design from somewhere else and changing an element. And then she just went crazy. And now she's completely designing her own blocks. Mm -hmm. That start with the Baltimore album that you did? Yes. Yes. And was it a, a challenge you gave yourself to do an entire Baltimore album quilt? I gave myself two years from start to finish. It took 13 months. Wow. But that includes hand. Hand quilting and everything. Wow. And um, tell people what is a Baltimore album quilt because it's a very specific type. It's mainly a red and green quilt. A lot of vases and flowers. Um, total applique. Total applique. Is there a set number of blocks that is in it or um, no. borders? Are there no. usually borders or no borders? Just a. It just depends on the person. Sometimes you'll see borders, sometimes you won't. So where does the name Baltimore album come from? This originated in Baltimore? Yes. There was a group of women um, who basically got together and decided to do these quilts and it, the name stuck. We can change the world, Fulton County. <laughs> Let's get one named after us. And I do, I wanted to point out, I've got a couple books here. The Dear Jane Quilt. Did you do that hand piece? No. No, machine. Debbie's one, the only person I know who's actually completed this. How many blocks? I think there's 116. I'm not sure. There's more it's than... It's been a while. Yeah. Um, and But you did something special with your blocks. What size were they supposed to be? Uh, this is based, and the one behind us is a Dear Jane quilt, based on a quilt found in Vermont that a woman named Jane quilted during Jane the Civil War? Sickle, Stickle, something like that. She quilted during the Civil War, is that yes, correct? Yes, while her husband was away at the war. And she had a lot of issues to work out because this is what she produced. Yes. And every block is different. Yes. And it's pretty incredible. This book was written and a number of Dear Jane quilt groups um, came about in order where people would come together and they would do a block, two blocks a week. Because a block mm -hmm. a week would take way too long. But you changed the size of yours. Yes. To larger or smaller? Smaller. Significant glance. I needed to do it by the numbers. I needed to have the math where I could oh. comprehend it. Because did you have a goal to have it fit on a bed or to fit in a space? or it was To just have it finished. To have it finished. So you made it smaller. You redid all the templates. There were no templates. But you I had no them. patterns when I first started. I had to figure them all out myself. That's why they're smaller, because I needed to be able to size them with what I knew. So we look at women like Dear Jane in the Dear Jane Quilt, and we think what an incredible amount of creativity that she used in a time that was obviously stressful in her life to come up with a thing of beauty. But I would say also within Fulton County, we have women who have the same kind of creativity, who have a problem, use a lot of math, my goodness. <laughs> and make a thing of beauty out of pieces that otherwise are just scraps in your life. And mm -hmm. I think that quilting is a wonderful example of that and what you do with Debbie is a wonderful example of that. Thank you. So let's see some things that you've designed. If you can let's see how much we can fit in if you look at it from overhead. This one is taken from another Civil War quilt called um, The Bride and Groom's Quilt. And I didn't want to do the exact thing, so I took bits and pieces and made my own blocks. So did you take bits and pieces from the actual um, book or from other pictures you've seen on the Internet? Pictures I've seen on the Internet because I don't have the book. Okay. Do you use Pinterest? Yes. Okay. And that might be a good tool for people out there. Maybe you're not to the point it just blows your mind to think about creating something, but you can create a file with pictures that someday, you know, pictures of things that you like. So I think this is really interesting. Um, some people might think they're buttons. I know people who've used, used floss and created circles. What is this? What is that? That's just a piece of fabric that had those flowers with the little white dots. Uh, so when I cut out the, the circles, I made sure that the dot was in there. That's called fussy cutting. Yes. So did you make this like a yo-yo where you put a stitch around no. and pulled on it and pushed it under? No, not on that one. How did you make them? Because it's like a, did you three-dimensional? I mean, there's, no. that's just the ends. It's just the seam allowance tucked in there because they're so small makes them bob out a little bit. When you go to quilt this, 
there's no way you can, this is thick, there's no way you can get a needle through it, but I imagine you'll quilt Just around, around the shapes it, yeah. because that's a nice small shape. Do you, when you're first making these, and this is, uh, looks like, it's a bride and groom quilt, is this supposed to be a male and female, or is it a mommy and a child, or just whatever? It's a pretty bird. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another example of fussy cutting. Get the pansy right in the center to be. Um, and then on the back you can see, likewise, she's trimmed out so that you can quilt on the inside, yes. or just because you're supposed to. Have you ever snipped through? Not good, not yet. <laughs> wow, good for you. But there's one block. Are there birds on all of these blocks? No, no. Pretty blue birds and little eggs and lots of leaves. Do you create these with the help of that one? A bias tape maker, yes. Bias tape maker. Mm -hmm. So these are cut on the bias so they can go around curves better? Yes important to know. And do they go through or do you stop and start it? No, that one goes through. Sometimes the stop and start, it depends on how big the thing is that I'm putting on top of it. And how many blocks will there be total? I think this one has 20. Oh my goodness. Is that going to be a queen size bed spread? Hopefully king. Oh my goodness. Okay, so here's another beautiful bird coming to land. You've got beautiful red berries, a pear, and what is this? That's a basket. How did you come up with this? So someone is picking a mm -hmm. pear in a basket? How yeah. did you come up with this? Because this is it's pearl cotton, right? Yes. In the place that I got the basket from, the book, that was all bias tape. Well, to me, that was oh. too small a bias tape. So I did it with embroidery. Oh, with pearl cotton, so I didn't have to fool with it. Looks like a, a almost a net. It's great. It'll go well on a fishing thing. Oh, how sweet. Look at this. She's got two little, two little slippers, fussy cut slippers. This is a woman of fashion. She's not barefoot. And over here, what are these? That's the washcloth. Okay, so mommy has just been giving a sponge bath to her yes. kid. And if you'll notice here, we fussy cut the hair to make it look like a bun. Do you have a story behind this block? Mm, no, just a good pattern out of a book. It was? <laughs> Did you do it exactly? No. No, I added the apron because I found two fabrics I like that went together. Now show us here how you came about. This is an example of how she does... Yeah, all of the design. patterns have a paper like this. And then I draw them out like this, and then I take a black magic marker to darken them up to make the, um, the template for them. And then like on the fencing, I wanted to get my positioning down right. So then you turn it over and you take a pencil and you rub it heavily on the design. And then you turn it back over and put it on your fabric and go over it with another pencil or, or even a fingernail. And it will transfer the pencil marking to the fabric where I could get everything lined up properly. Hmm. And that was instead of making a template for each of these. You basically... Right. Uh, I still had the template to sew around. But I wanted the placement of all these lines to come, to come out. It's a lot of pieces. And so here, I can see where you've initially sketched, but you didn't put the dark line. Does that mean you didn't? You decided not to do the house? Or does it mean that you were going to do the strings in a different? The strings are on there. OK. Um, the barn, I will wait till the quilt is laid out to see if that block needs something in that corner. And that's just because it was pretty busy, or you? It was, those look like they'd be teeny tiny. Yeah. OK. Yeah. They're a little small, so we're waiting to see if it needs it. Okay, so let's see what you did and how it compares. One of the differences when I went to, to do it, I put the boy standing on the fence post. Okay, and let's see if we can... So the initial he's standing on the ground. Mm -hmm. 
I was raised on a farm and <laughs> I stood on the fence post. <laughs> I think that's what, as long as there's no electric fence, that's right. what's done. Right, right. <laughs> so that's really neat to see that all these pieces you kept exactly the same. The only, and even probably the foot pieces, the only difference then is that you recut the jeans, they look like jeans, mm -hmm. and put the boy up. And so he's throwing his hat but one other thing that we see here, Debbie, you've made the tree white. Yes. What does this mean? What is it? That is freezer paper. Okay. Um, you draw out your design on the freezer paper. As you can see here, that was the original line, but I widened it a little bit when I cut it. And then you iron it down to your fabric. Which side? The shiny side down. Onto which side of the fabric? Then? The right side. Okay. So you take the freezer paper, you've drawn on it. You put it onto the correct side, the side of the fabric you want to be seen. You iron it down. Mm -hmm. And you're sure this is okay? It's not going to ruin the fabric? No. So that's just like a wax, basically, isn't it? Yes. So you're adhering the paper onto your cloth with a wax. And then what? Then you cut, leave a quarter-inch seam allowance around the tree. And again, I've made this bigger in a few spots. Mm -hmm. There's no reason, I mean... Right. No I don't one have will ever to look at it and right. think, oh my no one's gosh, know. you increased it by an eighth of an inch. And then when you go to sew, you've got your seam allowance cut into it. So for this is all done. This is completely right. done. And I'm guessing that this is a little tail that we can see sticking out that's not yet done. Right. And then all you do is turn it under. Now in this one, I'm going to move that back just a little bit so I can see. kind of thread are you using? I use Guterman um, silk thread. Why silk? It glides through the fabric really well. Occasionally I'll use cotton. It just depends on the project. And it doesn't look like, besides fabric, which believe me women can buy with abandon, it doesn't seem like this takes a lot of equipment. You've got a thimble, Right. And a needle. And all the, um, the bigger pieces were, were fussy cut from one piece of fabric. But all of this was taken from a scrap bag mm -hmm. of just little pieces that I cut and had saved. And even that little bitty piece in the hat. Is that a piece of fabric? Wow. Yes. Was taken from just a little bitty piece out of the bag. So do you throw anything away? Sometimes. <laughs> And you burned your first quilt. Yeah. I think we can all take hope from that. Okay. Then when it's done, <gasps> you peel it away, <gasps> and you have the finished tree. It's like a little bit of magic. That's beautiful. Thank you. What do you do with your knots? I don't like a lot of knots in the tree or in anything. So, like this is done right here, but I will keep sewing up into here, take a back stitch and be done with it. Oh, and that way it's never going to unwind right. to that point. Right. <sighs> wow. So we all have a lot that we can grow in, I think, with quilting, and I appreciate that. I appreciate, even if I don't quilt as much as I used to, I think that people can learn from each other and be inspired to do different things. I'm sure you're inspired by just pictures. They don't have to be quilts. Right. You can be inspired by fabric or by someone else's quilt or by going to an art museum and seeing a piece. A lot of quilts are made out of um, mosaic tile floors, pictures from that. Hmm. Is this what's consuming your time or do you have another thing in the works? Um, there's about five quilts in the process right now. <laughs> what advice would you have to someone who has maybe made their first quilt top and they're watching this and thinking, oh, I could 
I, uh, I could never, I don't, uh, they don't even know where to start. Start small. You know, you try new things. If you like it, you like it. If mm -hmm. you don't, go to the next project. And there's always really file 13. Always file 13. Or you can hand it to your friend. I think yes. that sometimes <laughs> that's a kind thing to do, too. Yeah. Um, and then for those of us who have many projects going, we put them in a box with our friend's name on it. Why is that, Debbie? Well, then when we die and people see all these unfinished projects, it's not like, look what she didn't finish. It's, oh, she thought of me. I hope that my name is on a box and I hope that I never have to get it. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Debbie, and sharing your beautiful art of quilting with us. Thank you. The technique was kind of strange, but I did the best I could. The teacher said my seams were somewhat odd. The blocks aren't straight, they are tense for sleeping eight. The only perfect quilts are made by God. You can quilt.